In numerical analysis, the Crank-Nicholson method is a finite difference method used for numerically solving the heat equation and similar partial differential equations. It is a second-order method in time. It is implicit in time and can be written as an implicit Runge-Cutter method, and it is numerically stable. The method was developed by John Crank and Phyllis Nicholson in the mid-20th century. For diffusion equations, it can be shown the Crank-Nicholson method is unconditionally stable. However, the approximate solutions can still contain spurious oscillations if the ratio of time step delta t times the thermal diffusivity to the square of space step delta x2 is large. For this reason, whenever large time steps or high spatial resolution is necessary, the less accurate backward Euler method is often used, which is both stable and immune to oscillations. The method, the Crank-Nicholson method is based on the trapezoidal rule, giving second-order convergence in time. For example, in one dimension, if the partial differential equation is then letting, the equation for Crank-Nicholson method is a combination of the forward Euler method O and the backward Euler method at n plus 1. Note that this is an implicit method. To get the next value of u in time, a system of algebraic equations must be solved. If the partial differential equation is nonlinear, the discretization will also be nonlinear so that advancing in time will involve the solution of a system of nonlinear algebraic equations, though linearizations are possible. In many problems, especially linear diffusion, the algebraic problem is tridiagonal and may be efficiently solved with the tridiagonal matrix algorithm, which gives a fast direct solution as opposed to the usual for a full matrix. Example, 1D diffusion. The Crank-Nicholson method is often applied to diffusion problems. As an example, for linear diffusion, applying a finite difference spatial discretization for the right-hand side. The Crank-Nicholson discretization is then, or, letting, which is a tridiagonal problem, so that may be efficiently solved by using the tridiagonal matrix algorithm in favor of a much more costly matrix inversion. A quasi-linear equation, such as would lead to a non-linear system of algebraic equations which could not be easily solved as above, however, it is possible in some cases to linearize the problem by using the old value for, that is instead of, other, times, it may be possible to estimate using an explicit method and maintain stability. Example, 1D diffusion with advection for steady flow, with multiple channel connections. This is a solution usually employed for many purposes when there is a contamination problem in streams or rivers under steady flow conditions but, information is given in one dimension only. Often the problem can be simplified into a one-dimensional problem and still yield useful information. Here we model the concentration of a solute contaminant in water. This problem is composed of three parts. The known diffusion equation, an advective component, which we choose to be a constant ux, and a lateral interaction between longitudinal channels where C is the concentration of the contaminant and subscripts N and M correspond to previous and next channel. The Crank-Nicholson method transforms each component of the PDE into the following. Now we create the following constants to simplify the algebra, and substitute alpha, beta and lambda into. We then put the new time terms on the left and the present time terms on the right to get. To model the first channel, we realize that it can only be in contact with the following channel, so the expression is simplified to. To solve this linear system of equations we must now see that boundary conditions must be given first to the beginning of the channels. Initial condition for the channel at present time step. Initial condition for the channel at next time step. Initial condition for the previous channel to the one analyzed at present time step. Initial condition for the next channel to the one analyzed at present time step. For the last cell of the channels the most convenient condition becomes an adiabatic one. So this condition is satisfied if and only if let us solve this problem for the case of three channels and five nodes. 
We express this as a linear system problem, where and now we must realize that A A and B B should be arrays are made of four different subarrays, and where the elements mentioned above correspond to the next arrays and an additional 4 by 4 full of zeros. Please note that the sizes of A A and B B are 12 by 12, and the D vector here is used to hold the boundary conditions. In this example it is a 12 by 1 vector. To find the concentration at any time, one must iterate the following equation. Example, 2D diffusion. When extending into two dimensions on a uniform Cartesian grid, the derivation is similar and the results may lead to a system of band diagonal equations rather than tri-diagonal ones. The two-dimensional heat equation can be solved with the Crank-Nicholson discretization of assuming that a square grid is used so that this equation can be simplified somewhat by rearranging terms and using the CFL number for the Crank-Nicholson numerical scheme. A low CFL number is not required for stability, however it is required for numerical accuracy. We can now write the scheme as application in financial mathematics. Because a number of other phenomena can be modeled with the heat equation, the Crank-Nicholson method has been applied to those areas as well. Particularly, the Black-Scholes option pricing model's differential equation can be transformed into the heat equation, and thus numerical solutions for option pricing can be obtained with the Crank-Nicholson method. The importance of this for finance is that option pricing problems, when extended beyond the standard assumptions, cannot be solved in closed form, but can be solved using this method. Note however, that for non-smooth final conditions, the Crank-Nicholson method is not satisfactory as numerical oscillations are not damped. For vanilla options, this results in oscillation in the gamma value around the strike price. Therefore, special damping initialization steps are necessary.